Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. Whenever there's a gun attack in the US, you hear a lot about America's powerful gun lobby and how it stops politicians from making meaningful changes to the laws. But do we have a similar problem in Australia, just in a different area? Anti-gambling advocates say we do. They argue poker machines are Australia's guns and they're being protected by a powerful clubs lobby. Today, Insiders host David Spears on the latest political efforts to crack down on pokies. Spearsy, Australia has for a very long time had a history with poker machines. A lot of people have played them for a very long time. Well, Sam, they've been around a very long time. They were first developed way back in around 1900 in the US. The Americans call them slot machines, but we quickly started calling them uh, poker machines. It wasn't really, though, until the 1950s that they were legalised here, uh, rolled out in serious numbers, real money involved, of course, in the gambling. Poker machines. They're lawful in New South Wales, but not in any other state of the Commonwealth. Uh, In New South Wales, there's about... But even then, in those early days, there were concerns. In fact, in around 1960, uh, ABC reporters hit the streets to ask the public about whether poker machines should be abolished. Do you think that poker machines should be abolished? Most decidedly. Why do you say that? Well, because there's too many married men doing all their wages on them. Okay, so 1960, there was some concern back then, but anyway, they're still taking off and they get a bit more enticing, don't they? They're a bit more exciting. Yeah, it's not just the spinning dials, but then you suddenly have flashing lights that become easier to play. You're not just, you know, pulling the the one-armed bandit, the lever on the side. You're pushing a button and, you know, you can start to play one, two, five, ten, maybe even more games at a time with a single press of the button. I think repeated studies have shown that that's all contributed to the addictive quality of the Mm. experience. Yeah, of course. And of course, when you win, you want to keep playing. We're now at a point, Spearsy, aren't we, where Australia is the nation with the highest concentration of poker machines per capita in the whole world. Australia has 20% of the entire world's poker machines. Uh, That's according to one estimate by the Productivity Commission. And within Australia, it's New South Wales that by far and away Mm. has the most, about 90,000 machines. That's almost half of the total number in Australia. It's about the equivalent in New South Wales as all of Canada. And about one third of all of the pokey losses in uh, in Sydney are coming from just three local government areas in, in, uh, in Sydney's west. So it's quite a concentrated problem. And I gather we're putting a lot of money into these machines. Yeah, last financial year, Australians lost nearly $11.5 billion. That's billion with a B, Mm. just on poker machines. So, yeah, we're talking about a significant level of money. But then also we had some damning findings of a New South Wales Crime Commission report that found billions of dollars of proceeds of crime were also being laundered through poker machines. A clearer picture of Australia's gaming scene is emerging, showing just how easy it's been to exploit. Maybe you've made 10 grand selling ice, you're a suburban crim. You go in, you put $10,000 cash through the pokies, get roughly 9,000 back, get a check and your money's clean. So it's not just the, the problem that it's creating directly for the user, But as this report outlined, it's what it's doing to help fund uh, illegal activity. So the obvious question, Spearsy, is why have governments allowed this to happen and haven't regulated it? Well, over the years, there have been a number of attempts at reforming the industry. Mm. But it must be said that most of those attempts, if not all of those attempts, have hit the wall. Tim Costello, who's a well-known anti-gambling advocate, uh, he heads up the Alliance for Gambling Reform. He says... If America's blind spot is gun laws, when we look at Australia, our problem is pokies. Revenue for the pokies industry buys a lot of politicians, a lot of media. uh, It buys just about everything. That's why it's so hard to reform. Is the pokie lobby here 
too powerful? Well, it's it's twofold, really. And yes, it is a powerful industry and political lobbying force in Australia. Yes, they're making a lot of money from these machines. Not only that, they bring in huge amounts of revenue for state governments in particular. And a lot of state governments have been overly reliant on this revenue for a long time. So there's, there's that factor. In New South Wales, poker machines are forecast to raise some $2 billion in the current financial year we're in. So that's just over 5% of the tax collected directly by uh, the state government. The club industry has significant political influence, not just because of that revenue stream to government, but the donations it makes as well. Yeah, right. So politically, the pokies are hugely beneficial and it's very difficult for politicians to change the rules around them. But let's have a look at what Julia Gillard did try to do when she came to power back in 2010. The important thing here is the uh, problem gambling that we see and the way it impacts on people's lives. Uh, we started yeah, well, Julia Gillard tried to tackle this problem. She was in a minority government, people will remember, and uh, one of those she was relying upon to support the government in, uh, in the House of Reps was the Tasmanian. Tasmanian Independent MP Andrew Wilkie. The fact is that poker machine problem gambling is an enormous problem in this country and we have an historic opportunity to do something about it. Now, he's been a, a, you know, a lifelong advocate of uh, poker machine reform, gambling reform, and part of the deal that was done uh, to win his support for the minority government was to do something about poker machines. So many members of parliament, including me, in my capacity as a local member, see too many people turning up at our electorate offices absolutely desperate because they or a member of their family has a big problem with poker machine addiction. So Julie Gillard pledged to force all gamblers, all poker machine users to register and nominate a loss limit before they actually sat down and started pressing the buttons on the machine. But immediately we had the the, the industry, Clubs Australia, launching a multimedia campaign, about three and a half million dollars they spent. There's no mistaking what the gambling lobby thinks of the federal government minister. We're saying to the government and to government MPs, don't vote for this. It will kill our clubs and it won't help problem gamblers. Uh, the line was, it won't work, it will hurt communities. And they especially targeted those Labor seats where a lot of the poker machines are uh, in, in places like Western Sydney. Julia Gillard didn't have bipartisan support, though. The opposition leader at the time, Tony Abbott, even suggested it could destroy her leadership. Decent Australians who are saying to the federal government, do not mess with us and do not mess with the clubs that are an important part of our lives and our communities. That's what I say. Hmm. So what did she do? Well, by 2012, so not long after, she buckled. What has happened is it became apparent that there wasn't the support in the House of Representatives to deliver Andrew Wilkie's plan. To introduced deliver into the Parliament today is much less than what the government promised me after the 2010 election. And I think that is as a direct result of the great pressure that was brought to bear by the poker machine industry. So that was at a federal level. She couldn't get it done. But let's now look, Spearsy, at what's going on at a state level in New South Wales ahead of an election. Because the New South Wales Premier, Dominic Perrottet, is trying to achieve a similar thing. Yeah, so he's promising it's about a $344 million plan it's here. That ultimately ensures that for generations to come, we will not have money laundering and we will not have family breakdown due to problem gambling in this state. The plan is to make pokies cashless by the end of 2028, so a little more than five years from now. He also wants to ban political donations by pubs and clubs and introduce, you know, the main aim here is to introduce these cashless gaming cards and that would include uh, mandatory self-imposed limits on how much is being bet, uh, cooling off periods, a break in play. You wouldn't be able to transfer funds from your credit card account into your spending account here. Players uh, would set their spending limits, as I mentioned, but they could only change that limit once a week. There's also a proposal to buy back poker machines, around 2,000 machines over five years. Not many in the scheme of how many the state has, but a start. Mm, and how has the club lobby reacted this time? Not well, as you would <laughs> expect. Although they have hit uh, a bit of a mess of their own, the, the boss of Clubs New South Wales, Josh Landis, had to resign after he was getting stuck into Dominic Perrottet over this. He told the Sydney Morning Herald that uh, the Premier was in part motivated by his 
conservative Catholic gut. Uh, that uh, provoked quite a reaction and uh, he was gone within 24 hours. Uh, those comments aren't an attack on me. Uh, they are an attack on every single person of faith in our state. The policy, though, it must be said that the Liberals uh, have embraced here, the Coalition's embraced here, does have support from unions in New South Wales. They're urging New South Wales Labor to get behind it. I mean, Labor's not completely on board. Labor no. has agreed to a trial only of this cashless gaming card idea, not the full rollout that Premier Perrottet is promising. Labor says they'll introduce a cash input limit of $500. They'll ban those VIP lounge signs people would be familiar with when they walk past a pub or a club. They'd ban donations too, that's significant. And also uh, they'd match that buyback of 2,000 machines over the same time frame. So yes, some similarities, but not going as far as the Liberals. Yeah, okay. So we're heading to an election in New South Wales on March the 25th, so not too far away. What do you think, Spearsy? Could this be a turning point? Yes. I mean, whichever way the election goes in March, change is coming. It's a question of how significant that change will be. If the coalition is returned, if Dominic Perrottet wins, they will have a strong mandate to impose these changes. And it would send a powerful message to other jurisdictions that it's possible to take on this powerful sector. If, however, Labor wins, uh, and we know they have a more challenging political issue here, given the prevalence of poker machines and, and the strength of clubs in their seats. We'll still see some incremental reform based on what the Labor Party is saying, but I think the clubs would be emboldened that their campaign had prevailed and you know, perhaps we won't see too much of a change in the strength of that lobby group. David Spears is the host of Insiders on ABC TV. The Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, has ruled out a nationwide shake-up of the gambling sector, saying protections around poker machines is a matter for the states and territories. Tasmania has announced it'll bring in mandatory cashless gaming and pre-commitment limits by 2024. This episode was produced by Flint Duxfield, Sydney Peed, Chris Dengate and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. ABC News Daily will be back again tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free.